So right now I'm going to interview Thomas Bertani, who uh, who is developing a service called Oracleize. It is, I think, the first provably honest centralized Oracle to be used with Ethereum. So first, uh, Thomas, your introduction. Thanks. Um, yes, what we are doing here uh, is providing, um, as you just said, the provably honest Oracle service, uh, which means that uh, we are pushing some data from uh, the internet to Ethereum smart contracts. So since smart contracts cannot access off-chain data directly, what you are providing is an API for smart contracts so that um, you can have your smart contract that uh, relies on, so on some data coming from the internet, such as weather conditions uh, or uh, price data feeds, things like that. Almost, pretty much anything that can be verified on the internet. So what does it mean, provably honest? Provably honest uh, means that um, um, we have a solution for the main issue of uh, uh, oracles, because oracle, the one of oracles uh, is not a new concept. It dates back to at least two years ago, probably more. Um, and the main issue with oracles uh, is that uh, being centralized, uh, they can quite easily um, alter the data coming from a third party. So you cannot really trust them. We are probably honest because um, we are sending back to the uh, contact that is uh, sending that, that is querying us um, a cryptographic proof based on uh, TLS notary, um, so that uh, we can show that a certain content that we are providing was really provided and sent back to us by a certain server at a specific time. So essentially, uh, we have an integrity proof. Okay. So, for example, imagine that I am the contract. Yeah and uh, I basically get data from you and you are Oracleize, yes. then the actual data might be coming from a service like Wolfram Alpha. Correct. But what I get as a contract from you is proof that you got that data from Wolfram Alpha at a certain time. Yes, you get back uh, the actual response coming from this API. Um, and um, uh, the identifier for uh, the proof. So uh, at the moment, we are just sending the proof not on the blockchain Ethereum directly because uh, the size uh, is quite big, uh, but we, we are sending it to IPFS and we are then, we are then sending back to uh, the calling Ethereum contract uh, the identifier, the, the hash on IPFS so that uh, um, any um, code can verify our honesty uh, based on the state of uh, the Ethereum blockchain, uh, so our hashes that are contained and stored there, um, and the actual proofs that are stored on IPFS. Okay, so so let us get into what these proofs exactly are, because that is the most interesting part of it. What is, what does a proof contain, and how is it how is it made? Essentially, uh, when you are exchanging data uh, with an HTTPS server, which has a TLS on the other side, um, then there is an exchange uh, of um, of signed content. Uh, so what the TLS Notter is doing uh, is providing uh, um, a format, a file, uh, which is containing uh, um, all the data needed to verify that this, this contact came exactly from that server. So you contain um, all the either, the either information so that you can reconstruct uh, the whole packet uh, that were exchanged. Um, and then uh, the RSA signature coming uh, from the server, that is what you actually verify. So okay. this is based on RSA signature verification, actually. So when the Oracle Oracleize is, is communicating with, say, Wolfram Alpha, let's take the assumption that the ultimate data is from Wolfram Alpha. Yeah. There's Oracleize in the middle. Then Oracleize sends the data to the smart contract and a proof that Oracleize got the data from Wolfram Alpha into IPFS. Right? Yes, the, uh, the way we are uh, getting the proof uh, is uh, using the TLS notary code base directly. Mm -hmm. So instead of, of calling directly um, uh, the Wolfram Alpha API, we are asking this uh, to the TLS notary um, code. It, there is a tool um, which uh, lets you get both the response back from the server and uh, the actual proof. Mm. So. So tell me again, what, what does a proof exactly contain and what does it prove? Does it prove the time and the exact response? The, the proof con contains um, all the data needed to verify the signature and the actual RSA signature. Um, so since in the header uh, of the response from the server, you usually have also the time. Um, this means that uh, in the header, you have all the information needed to understand both um, the origin server 
and the time uh, that this server uh, sent this uh, specific uh, content. So you cannot actually change the time. So, so yep. let, let, let's take the, an example that the data is uh, the price of Ether in dollar, yep. right? So it keeps changing time to time, okay. and, and, and timing is very important, right? If, yes. if the timestamp is, is yes. incorrect, then uh, the whole feed might be incorrect, mm -hmm. ultimately. So um, so, how, so how, how, how does the proof make sure that you as the oracle are not sending data which was one hour old? Or Essentially, um, with all the data that are included uh, um, in the proof, you can fully reconstruct the whole content that the server sent back. So once you, once you have done that, you can check that it exactly does match the one that Oracle has sent you before. Mm -hmm. So you can reconstruct uh, the whole packet uh, and the content, the body of the page, um, directly for, from the proof. And you can check that uh, the, um, the, the packet contains uh, uh, the date because, uh, they, for example, the Kraken server has sent you back even the time, the response time. So you have both the time included, in, which is a, a assigned a part of the signed content and the actual content, oh. all in the same con all in the same structure, which is verified with the signature. Okay, cool. So, so, uh, so that's pretty brilliant because what it allows is it allows uh, allows you to have a centralized oracle, and uh, that centralized oracle could be uh, taking multiple data sources like. Uh, from Google, from Wolfram Alpha, yeah. from free, uh, Freebase. And then if all of the data sources match, then you're pretty sure that uh, the, yeah. the data is correct, right? Yes, actually, this logic of finding a consensus on different data sources can be implemented already directly in the smart contract, on the smart contract side. Mm -hmm. But um, what you're doing is providing some helpers, which hopefully will be ready in a few weeks, so that uh, the, the contract can just uh, ask for a certain content, uh, and we are the one taking care of asking to different data sources. Obviously, this will be available just for some type of uh, queries, um, but I think it, this is very interesting and definitely useful. Okay, so how, how does your service differ from previous Oracle attempts like Reality Keys? Reality Keys is not signing uh, um, the content. Uh, I mean, uh, Reality Keys is just putting a signature of some content fetched from a, a third party. Uh, so they are not using a TLS notary technology. Uh, this means that uh, you, have you have to put some trusts in them. And as, as long as uh, you trust them, uh, their content uh, is considered by you trustworthy, right? Because there is the signature proving, proving this came from them. <coughs> the difference uh, um, is that uh, um, even if uh, our proof is probably stronger. At the moment, you cannot verify our proof uh, on the smart contract itself. So you need uh, um, an external code running, uh, which can check in real time the blockchain and uh, uh, IPFS to check all the proofs and see uh, if we send some um, altered data back. So in this case, uh, you can have an external service which is checking in real time our honesty and reporting in it to oracles, for example, while um, um, reality keys can be verified directly on the contract. So this means that uh, um, for, uh, for our service, we could be lying essentially just one time, because after that, all the network will know that we are not reliable anymore. OK. So in, in a sense, like uh, your concept could be one of the cheapest oracles you, you can be cheapest trustworthy oracles that can be built for the Ethereum system, right? Because all of the other ideas, like Augur's Oracle, yep. Um, need a lot of uh, need a lot of gas usage because there's a lot of people putting data, yes. and then there are complex matrix uh, matrix algebra taking place on that data. But all of this is avoided by Oracleize, right? Mm, yes, actually, um, Oracleize is more generic because, for example, Augur and the other prediction mar markets um, cannot just uh, send you um, a, a response in a timely manner because you need some time to find a consensus between the one giving the actual response, uh, while Oracleize is uh, much faster. Um, but um, Oracleize um, has some downsides, um, such as the fact that uh, being a centralized service, um, we, can be, uh, we, we can have downtimes, for example. So obviously, since 
we have all the interest uh, to build a good reputation. Um, this is something that we are really um, paying uh, good attention at. Um, but um, Augur essentially cannot be stopped as a, as a concept, while Oracle is being a centralized server um, can uh, have some down, down times. And other than this, potentially, uh, Oracle is could be banning some uh, contract addresses. Obviously, this is not something that we have interest to do, but um, these these are downsides of all centralized services, right? Oh, that's uh, that's 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 quite interesting. So essentially, it depends on the application or what you're doing. For some kind of application, uh, for sure, um, Oracle is, is just uh, cheaper and probably um, faster. Um, but uh, you have really to understand if you can build something on on the top of it, of or if you need something. Uh, uh, unstoppable and which w which will work in the same way uh, even uh, in 10 years, such as what Ogre could be. So how does or uh, Oracle intend to monetize its service? We are providing, uh, uh, we have a pricing model which is based uh, on, um, on a pay-to-use API. So essentially you are paying us uh, for uh, pretty much all the calls to the service. Um, the first uh, call is free, so that uh, you can start uh, building a chain of calls to Oracleize without uh, caring uh, of funding your contract during the, during the contract creation. Um, this means that, for example, if you want to fetch um, the price of Kraken uh, every minute, um, you can just have the first call uh, to start in the constructor of the contract, so as soon as the contract is created, and then every time you get a response back from Oracleize, you can, um, in the callback function, implement all the logic to call Oracleize again to request the same. So in this way, every minute, you will get a response back from Oracleize with the price. Um, all these calls uh, um, are to be paid, um, both because uh, we need um, to, to get a profit to keep the service running, um, and uh, to pay for the gas for the callback transaction, because what we are doing is to uh, pay um, a certain gas limit, we, we set a gas limit, uh, hence we pay some gas um, for the transaction we use to send to, to the calling contract our, the, the response back. So, so essentially, like it's like the payment logic for Oracle is also on Ethereum. So, yeah. uh, so my contract can call the Oracle's contract, send enough gas, yes. and then you, uh, the Oracle's contract will reply with the data. Yes. And then we can also implement a function that uh, that that Oracleize, the Oracleize contract keeps sending the same data item at, at yes, designated correct. periods of time. Yes. Is all of this functionality already implemented? Yes, so, and the one I just uh, talked about uh, are already in place, uh, and are pretty much all of these are shown in our code snippets mm -hmm. that are available at dev.oracleize.it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, a fork of Cosmo. It's a web IDE. Uh, and we have uh, a widget, uh, which is an helper, let's say, to integrate with Oracleize, so you can test your queries before the actual integration in the code to see what the response back will be. Um, and here we also have four uh, code snippets, uh, which are pretty interesting to understand how the whole thing works. Uh, and we are adding more, so. So what, what features are you going to add now? Uh, what is it? Are there any new features mm. you are you're going to add now? Or? We want to uh, integrate uh, other data sources because at the moment we just support uh, Bitcoin blockchain, um, which means that, for example, you can get the balance of a certain address. Wolfram Alpha, um, since we have uh, a business contract with them. Um, and URL, which means that uh, you can do either a GET or um, um, a POST HTTP request to any API on the internet. So this last one is, is the most generic. Uh, while the first two are what we call strong integrated ones. So we are trying to build some more strong integrated ones since they are way easier to um, integrate with the code and you don't need to specify the old URL which is also expensive as of gas from the calling contract. Um, so yeah, we are in the process of adding many new data sources and I hope the community will enjoy playing around with them. Hmm, that's, uh, that's well, one of these uh, will be Amazon uh, Mechanical Turk. Um, so we did something like um, a simple algorithm to find a consensus uh, in the response given back by Amazon Mechanical Turk's operators. So you can ask them almost anything. So uh, it's something like uh, um, a prediction market, but with a, a small, uh, um, with a centralized server services 
uh, which is the one of Amazon, and uh, just a small timestamp in which you check, right? Mm -hmm. For some use cases, uh, uh, it can be very interesting. For example, if you want check, to check something that is not easily verifiable with an API, such as, is Bitcoin VAT exempt in Italy? This is not easy to verify from a smart contract because there is no API available. But you you will be using something like this mechanical Turk data source, and will just say you, you will just specify exactly this uh, send uh, this question, and the system will try to find a consensus and it get back to you the, the actual response, which now is yes. Uh, okay, so basically you can use mechanical Turk uh, mechanical Turks as data gathering. Yeah, for uh, you. data gathering people as a data gathering workforce. Uh, yes, obviously this is not as reliable and trustworthy as, as over, but for some kind of applications, it can be very interesting. And it's one, just one of the data sources we, we will be providing. Are there any apps that already use your service? Um, we released it just a few days ago, uh, so I'm not aware of any external application, but uh, I know that there are uh, many developers who started, we started playing around, um, and we, were, we are already do building uh, applications uh, on the top of our service. So for example, two months ago, uh, we won the London Fintech Week Hackathon uh, by implementing uh, a flight delay insurance, uh, which was automated, uh, built on the top of Ethereum with Oracle Eyes. Okay, cool. So where, where can our listeners find out about Oracleize? You can find more at uh, www.oracleize.it uh, and there is an, the ID, as I already say, that uh, dev.oracleize.it and all the documentation is available at docs.oracleize.it. Thanks a lot yeah. for joining, Thomas. Thanks a lot for your interest.